All right, guys, this is going to be the notes on types of chemistry. And the first thing we're going to do is a little bit of a review on what chemistry is. This is one of the very first things we took notes on early in the year. So just as a refresher, chemistry is the study of matter. The study of matter. And I'm going to write matter down here because I'm gonna use that to split off into some other topics about matter, okay? So this is good, this is, a lot of this first half is gonna be reveal, okay? So as a refresher on the word matter, matter is anything with mass and volume. It has to have both, okay, mass and volume. Anything with mass and volume. Sorry, I squeezed it in there. This is how I abbreviate with sometimes when I'm running out of space. So anything with mass and volume is considered to be matter. Now, way back when we did our first unit, I think it might've been our second unit, but we did a flow chart with matter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna underline this matter and I'm going to split it into two categories. And you might be able to tell me what those two categories are, maybe not, but I'm gonna go ahead and split it over here. And over here, we're gonna make a little flow chart, okay? On this side, we had pure substances. Pure substances. Pure substances, okay? And one of the ways that we remember what a pure substance is, what a pure substance is, is that it has a symbol or a formula. It has a chemical symbol or a formula. Has a chemical symbol or formula. So we're gonna go ahead and split pure substances into two categories as well. So this category, pure substances, can be split into two subcategories. Now remember, we said it can have a symbol or a formula. That might help you remember what two things fall into pure substances. So I'm gonna split it like this. I'm trying to fit this all on the screen, okay? The things that have only a symbol are gonna be elements. Hundred and eighteen of them up on the periodic table. Okay, so elements are a type of pure substance, but the other type of pure substance is when you take multiple elements and you bond them together. You bond them together, make a new chemical. Okay, when you do that, those are compounds. Elements and compounds are the two categories of our pure substances. Okay, now I'm going to. Just for space sake, I'm going, to re, I'm going to adjust where I put that, put it a little bit closer to elements here. Okay. And remember, a compound is two or more, two or more bonded elements. Two or more bonded elements. All right, now we're going to move over to that right side of this flow chart. And if it's not a pure substance, it falls into the category of mixtures. Mixtures. Okay. With mixtures, this is not true, right? Has a chemical symbol or formula is only for pure substances. So mixtures have no symbol, or formula, okay, no symbol or formula, and their proportions can change. Proportions can change. Okay, so for example, really easy mixture, salt water. Put some salt in water, you've got salt water, right? 
but you can put a lot of salt in the water and it's still salt water, or you can put a tiny bit of salt in the salt water and it's still salt water. Okay, so different proportions, still a, still a salt water, that's a mixture. Gasoline, if you look at the pump at the gas station, there's three types of gasoline. That's because they have different ratios of things in them. They have different amounts of octane or hexane or butane, maybe a little bit of pentane in there. So they're gonna have different ratios of their proportions, which makes them mixtures, okay? So mixtures can have different proportions. Now we're gonna take mixtures and split that into two categories. Again, hopefully this is sounding familiar. And these words are a lot longer, so we'll see if I can fit them in here. Um, when you have a mixture that looks the same all the way throughout, like salt water, dissolves perfectly, spreads out throughout that beaker, that's going to be a homogeneous mixture or homogeneous mixture. Okay. And when it is obviously a mixture, you can see the different parts. They are not distributed perfectly throughout the mixture. That's going to be heterogeneous. Heterogeneous. Okay. So again, the description for homogeneous would be uniform. Uniform. If we were all wearing uniforms, we'd all look the same, right? So it looks the same throughout. Looks the same throughout. Let me adjust my camera here. It looks the same throughout, okay? All right, heterogeneous would be the opposite, right? Not uniform. Not uniform. Does look like a mixture. So looks like a mixture. looks like a mixture. Okay. Okay, so that's a refresher of chemistry in general. Now matter is a really broad category. We just divided it into two subcategories and then we divided each of those subcategories into two more subcategories. But whether you're studying mixtures or elements, you are performing chemistry. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about, there's different types of chemistry that you can be using to study those things in matter, within matter, okay? So studying types of matter is chemistry, but how you're studying types of matter or which specific types of matter you are studying fall into different fields of chemistry. So we're going to continue these notes with types of chemistry. We just refreshed what chemistry is in general. Now we're gonna go through types of chemistry. There are five general fields five general fields that can all overlap. And I'll talk to you about what I mean by that after we talk about the five types, okay? So there's five general fields that can all overlap. So we're going to do another flow chart, but this one's gonna be a lot wider. Um, so I'm gonna you know, have to be creative here, but I'm gonna just start with chemistry as my top piece. So chemistry in the top center of my page for this flow chart. Now we're gonna split it into five types. So my first type, I'm gonna write all the way as far left as I can, I'm gonna write organic. Organic. Now, you may have heard this word before, especially if you ever go grocery shopping, you've got an organic section in the produce department, okay? Organic in chemistry means study of matter containing carbon. Study of matter containing carbon. Study of matter containing carbon. 
That's very different from the produce section. We're gonna learn about what the produce organic means, okay? In a future unit, in our, in our food chemistry unit. But organic in chemistry means study of matter containing carbon. So carbon is the key element right there. That's 100% what we're looking for when we're thinking about organic chemistry. So by that definition, everything that you eat is organic from, from your foods, okay? Some of your medications, like Tums, for example, might not be an organic compound, but you're going to, all your food is gonna be considered organic, whether it's organically farmed or not, okay? All right, so the next section is, is related. It's the opposite here. We're gonna say inorganic. Inorganic, so it's the same word organic, but we just put I-N in front of it, which would mean not organic, which hopefully you can tell me if it's not organic, it means it is not made of carbon. Okay, so this is going to be the study of matter study of matter without carbon. without carbon, okay? So most commonly things would be rocks, minerals, uh, metals. Those are going to not have carbon, okay? Um, we're looking at matter without carbon. Now, steel has carbon in it, but when we talk about organic, we mean carbon, like life-based compounds that have carbon. They're gonna also have hydrogen with them. So steel would also fall under inorganic. Okay, in the middle, We've got biochemistry. Biochemistry. Okay, what this, hopefully you know what bio, biology means is the study of life. And then chemistry is study of matter, right? We're putting them together. We're looking at the study of chemical processes study of chemical processes in living organisms in living organisms so really anything that a living organism does we digest food we um, turn sugar into fat to store it for energy for later. We do all kinds of things in our bodies. Plants do all kinds of things as well. When you zoom into that molecular level to see what's happening, that is a process in a living organism and you're looking at it at the molecular level. So that makes the chemical process and that's biochemistry. So that's combining those two sciences. Okay, physical chemistry is next. Physical chemistry. Hopefully you're doing better on space than I am. I've got a really narrow last piece here, okay? This is the study of, and I'm gonna just draw a line here to just divide this, okay? The study of how things work Study of how things work at the molecular level. Study of how things work at the molecular level. Okay, so if you're trying to figure out why is this plastic stronger than this plastic, you're gonna be looking at that molecular level. You're gonna zoom in and figure out why does this one have stronger properties than this one, okay? So really, anytime you're looking at how things work, that's the most important part of this definition. Anytime you're working, looking at how things work based on what they're made of, that's gonna be physical chemistry, okay? Okay, and then my fifth one, I'm going to write it up here just to give myself a little bit more space. It's called analytical. 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 So analytical chemistry. If you're analyzing something, 
you're trying to figure out what it's made of in chemistry. So analytical chemistry is study of what things are made of. Study of what things are made of. Study of what things are made of. So if a meteor crashes into the ground and you take it to a lab and you're trying to figure out what it's made of, that's analytical chemistry. Um, let's see. I mean, that's, a, that's a good example. If you find a white powder in someone's car and you're trying to figure out if it's cocaine or powdered sugar, that's analytical chemistry. So that's another example, okay? Now, as we said earlier, they can all overlap, okay? And we're just gonna write one more note maybe underneath your, your flow chart here, okay? Each field, each field can be broken down even further Each field can be broken down even further, which we're not gonna do that in our flow chart, but. And when you break them down, that's where you see overlap, okay? So I'm just gonna put in parentheses, overlapping. Overlapping, okay? So here's a really good example. If I'm looking at a brand new virus called COVID-19, and I've never seen, we've never seen this before, and we have it in a lab, the first step that we do with that is what is it made of? So what kind of chemistry is that? Well, that's analytical chemistry, okay? Because I'm trying to figure out what it's made of. And then I figure out how does this thing work inside the body to cause illness? Well, that's partly physical chemistry because it's how things work, but it's also biochemistry because it's causing illness in a human and that is a biological process, a chemical process inside a human being, okay? Um, and then if we're trying to make a vaccine to stop this, we're probably heavily in organic chemistry because we're gonna be making some kind of carbon-based compound to go and fight and stop this virus from interacting in our body. So when you get, when you get really specific in a research project, sometimes you're pulling two, three, four different fields of chemistry into the same project. So the next assignment that we're gonna work with after completing these notes here is going to be asking you to do that. It's gonna read about each little research project, just a little blurb. Tell me what kind of chemistry it is and why. Just pick one. If it fits in more than one, pick one of them, tell me why. Then there'll be a question at the end that asks you to identify something as multiple areas of chemistry. So good luck to you. Thank you for tuning in and we will see you in class.